I'm a longtime fan of the game Mario Kart on the Nintendo. I've been playing it for years and years. Love racing with my friends, love racing with our family. We do that a lot. Uh, and just enjoyed the game for a long time. Shout out to my main man, Waluigi. No idea, but he's my favorite guy on there. That's why I always pick. You know, sometimes those tracks can be just really difficult, though, can't they? They have some really tough tracks. My hand-eye coordination isn't as good as it used to be, and sometimes I really just struggle with the track on its own. And then you throw in all these different items that they have, and there's obstacles all over the road, right, that really just can throw you off and, and make the game even more challenging and more difficult. You know, it's not exactly Mario Kart, but listening can offer the same kind of challenges, right? There's there's a lot of difficulty involved in listening. It's not easy. It's not natural. So in this video, I just want to talk about a few of those challenges of listening. What are some of the things that can throw roadblocks up at us, can throw some hurdles in our way as listeners? And we can focus on those and maybe try and work around them a little bit in the process. So when we look at the challenge of listening, first and foremost, we need to acknowledge that listening is not easy. There, it's just not easy. It's not natural for us. It's not um, something that happens easily for us. So, so there are a variety of things that make listening not easy, though. For example, in our modern day and age, we've got information overload. We have information coming at us at all times and from all directions and from all of these different devices that we have. It's hard to pay attention to any particular stimuli when we've got all these other things that are distracting us, right? So we've got really a situation where we've got almost too much information. We've got information overload and that can get the way in the way of, of effective listening. We also sometimes just have personal concerns. You've got things going on in your life and somebody else is trying to talk to you and, and maybe it's about something personal. Maybe it's about something at work. Doesn't matter. You've got something else on your mind that can make it psychologically can make it very difficult to be an effective listener because we can't really put our full focus into it and our full energy into it and really flip that switch to be an effective listener. If we've got other things on our mind, that makes it really, really challenging. We also have the issue of rapid thought. Uh, quite frankly, our brains work faster than most other people speak. Uh, typically, the average English speaker in the United States speaks at a rate of around 150 words per minute. But our brain works more at a rate of 450 to 600 words per minute. So our brain is working three or four times faster than the other person is speaking. That makes it very easy for us to just start daydreaming or, or you know, get on a different train of thought or jump to a conclusion because we have this rapid thought happening. And finally, just noise can get in the way, whether that's um, physical noise or physiological noise or psychological noise, anything that interferes with the sending and receiving of that message. And it can just make it really, really hard. We've got a lot of noise, again, information overload and personal stuff going on. And, and we've just got all these things happening that create noise for us and make listening not easy. So it's not like this is really set up for success. Listening, effective listening is not necessarily, you know, just primed for some for success in the natural state of things. So we first need to acknowledge that listening is not easy. Now, there are some things we can do to kind of remove some of these obstacles, certainly within, you know, to, to what's ever within our control, we can uh, you know, limit information overload, limit these things. But, but we have to acknowledge first that they do create challenges because they increase the difficulty level for listening. So not only is listening that easy, but then we get into this idea that listeners don't all receive the same message. Okay. Mostly this has to do with um, with, you know, we've talked about frame of reference in other videos and in prior videos. So um, frame of reference, that, that filter that exists, um, that is made up of your beliefs and your experiences and your knowledge. And that's totally unique for every person, right? So 10 people listening to the same speaker may come out with a different idea because not all listeners receive the same message. We've also talked about how, you know, we, we don't receive a lot of instruction in listening. And so as a result, we can develop a lot of poor listening habits, just things that we do poorly as listeners, things that we don't do well because we haven't received a lot of instruction. We haven't put a lot of focus into this, developing that skill. And, uh, and if you don't do that, then you're going to have poor listening habits that result. Things like pseudo listening, which is just kind of pretend listening. I'm sure we've all done this, right? Where you're giving the, every signal that you're listening, you're nodding and you're maintaining eye contact. And you may even be saying, mm, yes, right. Go ahead. Yeah, of course. Sure. Yeah. Doing things like that 
but we're not really listening. We're giving every signal that we're listening, but we're really making our grocery list or we're thinking about the TV show we watched last night or, you know, what else we'd rather be doing? We're pseudo listening, right? Or we could be stage hogging, meaning that in that conversation, we're, we're constantly bringing things back around to ourselves. Somebody's telling you about their bad day and, and your response is basically, oh, you, you think you had a bad day? Let me tell you about my bad day. And you're trying to kind of one up them or you're constantly bringing the focus back around to yourself that stage hogging or we engage in selective listening only hearing those things that that we want to hear we feel really pertain to us and not getting the full picture the full context we talked about filling in the gaps in terms of our brain works faster than the other person is speaking so we just kind of let our mind drift and we just assume different things you know we have all these different bad listening habits that we get into because because we um, don't train up that skill properly, right? We 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 don't uh, don't effectively practice that skill in our early days, and as we're learning, just like you know, we learn, we practice how to write, and we learn to get rid of some of those bad habits. We don't do that in listening, so we develop all these different poor listening habits. So, you know, as a result, listening has a lot of challenges, a lot of things that are difficult for us as listeners. Some of them are the result of things that we do and we can control. Other times it's not so much, but we need to be aware, even if there's some, you know, if there's noise out there that we can't control, then we can be aware of it and be more focused on shutting it out and even focus harder on what it is we're trying to listen to. So there are, you know, lots of different challenges, but there are also lots of different ways to overcome those challenges. If you have questions about the challenges related to listening or what we can do to kind of overcome those things, please feel free to email me. I'd love to chat with you in that form. Um, in the meantime, I hope that you will keep these things in mind. Start to you know, avoid some of these bad habits and really uh, work on developing that skill because the more we practice effective listening skills, the more effective we will be as listeners. <music>